Now Sports with Sports Director Scott Lever. Brad Benjamin is one of the most accomplished golfers ever to come out of Rockford. He's had some incredible achievements. Right now, though, Benjamin's main goal is to simply live a normal life again. Benjamin was on top of his golfing career in 2009 when he won the U.S. Amateur Public Links Championship in Oklahoma. That made him the first Rockford native to qualify for the Masters the following year in 2010. He didn't make the cut at Augusta, but he made a great showing as an amateur and finished 65th. In 2011, Benjamin competed in another major, the U.S. Open. He even made the cut there, the first Rockford golfer ever to do that. Benjamin then turned pro, competing on several mini tours, and he went to PGA qualifying school, but a series of injuries derailed his hopes of making the PGA Tour. Now Benjamin, 37, lives in Bluffton, South Carolina, with his wife Ricky and their two young children. He's not focused on golf. His focus is on surviving, literally. Benjamin needs a life-saving kidney transplant. I spoke to him at length today about a situation in a Zoom interview. Here's that entire interview. Brad, tell us when you first realized that your kidneys weren't functioning the way they should be. How long ago was that? Um, it all started about a week before Thanksgiving in 2022. And we were traveling back home for Thanksgiving, back up to Illinois. And I had a spot in my vision. And I'd been feeling really ill the week or so leading up to that. I had a few days with really bad headaches. And it was just unusual for me to feel that way. And I knew something was up, but I wasn't sure. But um, on our travel, it just progressively got worse. And I eventually ended up in an optometrist's office in uh, Wisconsin. And she told me that, you know, it looked like I was having some high blood pressure issues and I should get to the ER. So this is something you think you've been dealt with since birth, that, that your kidneys just haven't been right since you were born? Yeah, I spent 11 days at the hospital, the first three in the ICU, and it took them quite a while to get my blood pressure down and under control before they could start kind of figuring out what was going on. But it ended up taking a kidney biopsy to sort it all out. And they diagnosed it as IgA nephropathy or Berger's disease, which in my case, they said there's no telling as to when it first started. But, you know, I very well could have been born with it. You know, it could have been in the last handful of years. It could have been the last 10. There's really no no exact science to knowing when it all began, but um, the disease just is a slow moving thing that only fortunately only attacks my kidneys. So that was kind of the silver lining in the diagnosis was my kidneys were gone, but at least wasn't going to go anywhere else to you know make things any worse. What treatments have you gone through? What are you currently going through to try to manage the, your, your situation? Well, the first thing they did once they realized the kidney failure was, you know, what it was, they installed a catheter in my chest and I started doing dialysis that same day at the hospital in Wisconsin. Um, and anybody who's familiar with dialysis, it's a pretty exhausting situation, but um, they start you off slow, maybe an hour and a half or so the first, first treatment and they work your way up to three and a half hours at a time. And from that day forward, I was having to do it every other day for three and a half hours. And once I got down here in my, at, in my hometown, there's a clinic that took over and I did the same thing, but um, I did what that, that's called hemodialysis. And I did that for probably five months or more before they transitioned me to a home dialysis, which unfortunately took about four surgeries to um, successfully have it, you know, doing what it was supposed to be doing. And, and, you know, it was really tough. I mean, the surgeries were hard to, hard to go through one after the other, but I'm glad I did it because I've, I'm feeling significantly better since then. The hemodialysis, I lost 10 pounds, actually almost 20 pounds of weight. I mean, I was down in the low 140s, which I mean, I don't remember the last time I saw that. So it was a tough situation to be in. But now that I'm transitioned to home and doing it here, it's a different method, but it's the same idea. It's just doing the work my kidneys can't do. And it's a uh, you know, I'm pretty much doing the treatment when it's all added up for about 16 hours a day. What's your medical team telling you about the next step? What needs to be done now to get you back to on the right track to living a normal life? Well, from the very onset, I mean, the doctor told me that this is irreversible. You know, eventually you're going to need a kidney transplant. Um, you know, with dialysis, your body can you know, what I'm doing here at home, I can sustain for on average eight to 10 years. So I have time for a transplant, but obviously there's no guarantees in any of it. I mean, there's, 
you know, when I was doing hemodialysis, it's really hard on your heart, but you know, they're adamant, you know, there's no time to waste. The sooner you can do it, the better. Um, you know, fortunately what I'm doing, the doctors have said that, you know, I haven't had any further declines. Uh, the treatment's working well for me, but you know, the sooner it's done, the better. Is there a lengthy waiting list that you're on to receive a kidney transplant? How does that work? Yeah, they require you to do the hemodialysis in center for two or three months before they get you on a list because they first want to see if your body or kidneys can respond and recover. In my situation, it was kind of like we knew that wasn't going to happen, but you still have to go through those, um, you know, procedures. And but I got on the list back in April and I actually got a call early May, which was totally out of the blue. I was not expecting it to be that quickly. And um, I had the option of taking a deceased kidney at that time, but with my brother around the corner, he wanted to help. And my team of doctors at MUSC in Charleston, where I go, were adamant that with my health and age, um, seeking out a living donor is the best option because those situations with a living donor tend to last on average 20 years where a deceased kidney is half of that. So if I would have accepted that kidney at that time, you know, I'd probably be back in the same situation I'm here today in another 10 years. So with my brother having such a good opportunity with, I just figured I had to give that, give that, uh, it's, it's chance, but, um, I'm still on the list. You know, I don't plan to take a deceased kidney, you know, if it comes down to it or my health declines and I need to, I certainly would. But at this point, we're looking for somebody that's willing to help me. How difficult is it to find a kidney that your body would be receptive to? What are the kind of the odds of, of that? Um, you know, I don't really know that exact, exact answer. I mean, everybody's different with blood types and whatnot. But um, the fortunate thing is there was a Nobel Prize winning economist uh, maybe a decade or more ago that wrote an algorithm and started an exchange program. So you don't need a direct match in order to be a living donor. Anybody who wants to donate can sign up. And then this algorithm takes care of the hard work and matches people around the country. So somebody who's going to help me that isn't a direct match could be a match for somebody else who in turn has a donor on their end that could match me. So it's a swap program. Well, you and your family obviously have a lot of people up here in the Rockford area who know you well, who care about you and who are wishing the best for you. So Let's say there are folks watching this, hopefully, who want to help, who would like to explore the possibility of a donating a kidney. What step do they need to take to see if they can be a kidney donor? Yeah, so the easiest way to help would be to go to muschealth.org, um, follow through their links to the transplant area. They have a um, donor form on their website that anybody can fill out. And again, there's there's no wrong person to donate. It doesn't matter age, race, health, anything. I mean, you, if you're interested, you sign up. Um, they'll do the process of you know going through your health record and contacting you back with any further follow up. But they do most of the hard work. It's as simple as signing up and just seeing what happens. Describe just in general how you feel physically right mm -hmm. now, and are you able to do your normal activities, daily activities? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm fortunate that with my age and health, you know, this was the only thing that was the issue. There was no other organs or anything attacked, but um, I certainly don't feel like I have the same stamina that I used to, and I've lost some weight. With that goes some strength, but I do feel better now today than I did, say, last spring when I was in center doing the hemodialysis, which is much harder on your body, but, you know, I know a lot of it has to do with the medication I'm taking and the treatment without it. I wouldn't be here today. So it's very important that I find a donor. Is golf still a part of your life? Are you able to work a few hours a week or are you just focused on your health right now? Yeah, unfortunately, like even the year leading up to this, I had some elbow issues and I went under surgery for my elbow. And um, I played a little bit the month or two leading up to this diagnosis once my elbow had recovered, but it's been a long three years. I haven't really been able to play. Um, since this has all happened physically, I wouldn't have been able until I started this home treatment, but um, I've been out a couple times to hit balls, um, nothing too serious, just kind of to have fun and just see how it feels. But my elbow still isn't quite right, which is another concern that I have that hopefully one day when I do get over this, I can sort that out as well and get back to playing some golf. So just to summarize here, 
your medical staff says you definitely need a kidney transplant. That that's the only answer for you right now. But there there mm -hmm. is no timeline. But the sooner it happens, the better. Is that am I correct with that? Yeah, that, that's absolutely correct. I mean, like I said, if I wasn't doing the treatment that I'm doing right now, there's no way I'd be here. I mean, when I was in the ICU for those three days in Wisconsin during that initial diagnosis, I mean, they literally told me it's a miracle you didn't have a heart attack or a stroke to begin with. And death can certainly follow after that. So, um, you know, the one thing I've learned from this is tomorrow is not a guarantee. And the sooner we get something going, the better. Well, if you're interested in becoming a kidney donor or learning more about what that entails, go to muschealth.org slash medical dash services slash transplant slash living dash donation. Now, I know you cannot remember all that, so you can find this link along with a kidney donor form link by looking for this story on our website, mystateline.com.